Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Carla and I make videos about showing up for yourself. By showing up for myself, I managed to lose 183 pounds over half my body weight. And here on the internet, on YouTube, on Instagram, on TikTok, I share with you guys my journey of showing up for myself, which includes weight loss, weight maintenance, personal development, self-care, and fashion and beauty mental health work which i think is the most important as well today i'm going to be talking to you about four books that helped to shape me into the person that i am today and these books were the catalyst and the thought provokers that helped me to delve deep inside me and really work on my personal development my self-actualization my self-realization and really start to help with my self-awareness and my development as a person these books were, some of them were read pre my journey and some were read post my journey. And if you're interested in my full journey of how it is basically a mental health personal development journey that led me to losing weight, I will leave my um, that video and my playlist up here. Today I'm going to be talking to you about these four books, but there's one particular book that really was the, it was the catalyst to my weight loss. It's actually the book that helped to change my life. And that book is The Artist Way by Julia Cameron. And this book I picked up because I picked this up and I was living in my my partner and I, we had just bought a house and we had just moved out of our apartment and we were living with my mom in a very, very small apartment uh, and the three of us together and our cat. And we only had one cat at the time. And we were waiting for the sale of our house to go through. We were desperately saving money, trying to, you know, get on the property ladder and pay for all the legal things, etc., etc. And my mom lived outside of, of Dublin. And we work in Dublin. We worked in Dublin. And so we didn't have much money to spend on, you know, outings and things like that. But we also didn't want to be commuting during rush hour and spending two hours in the car in the evening. And so I decided that we, um, that I would pick up this book. And I'd heard this book being recommended a couple of times. And at the time I was a communications, uh, head of communications for a charity. And I was feeling that my creativity was really stunted, that I was feeling that I wasn't able to kind of create, I had done a really, really successful marketing campaign, two really successful marketing campaigns the previous two years. And it was coming up to the time to need to do another one. And I was like, I don't have anything in me. Like I don't have an idea. I had really at that point actually started to lose my love for what I was doing. I was like, I need to like get my creative juices flowing. Now this is pre any kind of change, Carla. So this is like 23 stone, living with full anxiety, living with full negative self-talk. In fact, I often give the example of at one of those marketing campaigns at the launch of it, that it was attended by ministers. It was hugely, hugely successful. It ended up securing us a lot of funding. It was an amazing event and I did it all by myself. And I did it, I think I run the whole, ran the whole campaign for like 2000 euro or something like that. Anyway, but I remember standing there afterwards after the event had finished and the campaign was going and we were in the press and everything and I remember going yeah none of this matters because you're fat this doesn't matter like yeah you might have been this might have been good but it, none of this matters so I have this really negative self-talk so I'm trying to like find a way to beat that uh, marketing campaign and I came across somebody suggested the artist way I think it was a YouTube video actually uh, I believe it might even have been Ingrid Nielsen back in the day, um, the Glamorazzi. Wow, bah, that's a throwback. And she suggested this book, I think it was her, and it's called A Course in Discovering and Recovering Your Creative Self. And Julia Cameron wa is a, uh, a writer, an activist, an artist. Uh, she's a journalist, she is a playwright, she does things on TV, she's basically a very prolific and very popular writer and also now a creative, creative teacher, let's say. I don't think you can really teach creativity, but she taught creativity with this way. And part of this book, one of the things that she talks about in is how, what, what something that really resonated with me when I started to read it and started to pick it up was that she didn't believe that she could write without being 
drunk or without drinking. She felt that those two things went hand in hand. And I felt like I kind of started, that kind of kept an idea in my head. I was like, oh, that's really interesting. I kind of felt like food, for me, I couldn't function without the constant access to food. So that kind of started like a little bit of a trigger for me. And she talks about um, a lot of different things and there's, there's something, you know, when you have that creative block, if you are in any, you know, if you're a writer, if you're a journalist, if you are, you know, have to come up with a campaign, if you have to do anything creative, and I'm sure in every way we're doing things creative, whether you're an artist or whether you're a bookkeeper, you know, you have to come up with things. And when you're looking at that blank page, it's very scary um, part. So Julia developed this thing called the morning pages. I'm actually getting emotional thinking about it. There's something she wrote here that I wanted to read out to you. I learned to show up at the page and write down what I heard. And so while Vincent and I, instead of commuting um, and sitting in traffic for two hours, we decided that we would go get a cup of coffee somewhere and we would try this morning page thing. Now, morning pages, obviously, you don't have to do it in the morning. Um, I found that the evening worked really well for me. And basically you write for three pages and you write whatever comes to your head. It is, this is not to be read back. This is not to be edited. This is not, it's basically there's it's an accumulation of pages, not judgments. Sorry, I have my notes here, so because I just wanted this couple of things she said, which are so, like, that's really good. Accumulation of pages, not judgments. And you basically sit in and you open the book and you start to write. You start, open a notebook and you start to write and you allow yourself to write whatever comes into your head. And sometimes it could have been really silly. It could have been, you know, um, I'm sitting here in a coffee shop with Vincent. I have a coffee in front of me. I didn't really want this coffee today. I'm wearing these kind of shoes. These shoes were uncomfortable. I wonder what that man is doing over there. And you just allow things to flow. And then you, as you kind of get more into it, you know, you start to kind of get a better flow. And that's why I think you do three pages is to get a really good flow into it. And we had quite a large notebook, I thought I, I don't have it here. Um, it was kind of like this size the size of my head so I was doing like really writing and the part that I liked with this was that you are not to edit yourself this is not about getting good or bad writing this is not about your perfect neat handwriting this is not about whether you spelled something right this is completely just a brain dump a big vomit onto a page onto three pages and allow yourself to just go for it to say blah, 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 whatever comes up and stuff started to come up for me it was the first time in my entire life that i allowed myself to be unedited in my entire life in my entire life that i allowed myself to be unedited in what i did not thinking about the words that were coming out of my mouth because I was I constantly had this negative narrator going on in my head judging everything that I was doing so I was very careful of my words my actions what I was doing basically was on tenter hooks all the way through my life because I was so afraid of judgment and because I judged myself so much I assumed everybody else around me was judging and I wrote and I wrote and I wrote and then I stopped writing and I stopped writing uh, about a couple of weeks into it because something started to stir in me and something was something I can't even describe it it was like I feared the morning pages I feared the book because I knew something was coming up because it was the first time I ever connected with myself really connected with the core being of who I am not the person that I pretended to be my whole life, not the person that I thought everyone wanted to be. It was the first time that I met, like in a tiny, tiny way, met the real me. Heard the real me for the first time started to come out. Not the person that my parents had shaped or society had shaped or that I had learned that I liked things because of other people. You know, this was, the first time something's coming up for me. 
and it was like this tiny, tiny, like grain of sand in the in my gut. And it was so small, but I was so afraid of it. I was petrified of it. And it started, it kept kind of growing and growing and growing. And I thought, I, this is, there's something here, something's happening. So I literally was like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not okay with this right now. And I would say about two weeks later, I had my realization that changed my entire life than my realization that I now know, because I didn't realize then when I was writing what was happening, but I now know that I was connecting with my true self and that I realized that the negative narrator in my head wasn't me. And I was, I had no idea who I was and that I basically had been this formed creature of what I thought I should be. And I had no idea who I was. And that was the catalyst for my entire life change. So this book changed my life. Now I've never finished this book. I've never finished the 12 week course. I literally got to like week two of it. Um, and maybe I'll go back and finish it, but those pages, those first, first two chapters changed everything for me. So thank you, Julia. Thank you very much. I'm sure you're not watching this, but thank you very much. Oh, there's one thing that she says in here and um, when you're writing the, the morning pages, is it good, is it bad? It's none of your business. The next book is The Dance with Anger by Harriet, Dance of Anger by Harriet Lerner. It's a woman's guide to changing the pattern of intimate relationships. Now that sounds very like hooey and like blah, blah, blah. But I picked up this book around the time just after I had my realization, literally just after, very, very close after. And it's about a groundbreaking exploration of how women get caught in the anger trap. I have a couple of notes here. Anger for women is seen as an unnatural and unladylike. Anger is an important emotion that covers our feelings of hurt, frustration or violation. And this misguided anger can surface in self-destructive self-criticism, denial, or guilt. Does that sound like anybody? So let me, let me unpack that a little bit. I was never allowed to be angry as a child because anger was something that was unnatural. Um, it was unladylike. Uh, you, we had to be pretty and not expel anger um, it was not something that we did and we basically buried it we were encouraged to bury the anger uh, in school at home everywhere anger was not a thing that a young girl was allowed to have it was not an emotion that we were allowed to have and as such I buried my anger for 32 years I never allowed myself to get angry, to understand anger, to feel anger. And anger is a very healthy emotion. It's a trigger. It's telling us that something else is wrong in our body. And so I, my anger came out in other ways for me. Um, the main way that I would express anger is I would get very upset. I would cry because that is an acceptable, not, this is not a conscious, decision but that is an acceptable emotion for a woman is to cry so instead of getting anger getting angry i would cry or get upset reading this book made me realize that i was not in any way in touch with my emotions i didn't understand the difference of emotions that i was feeling i didn't understand a lot of what was happening inside me and this book really helped me to trigger my anger and to help me to allow my feelings. I'd like to read you this paragraph, if you will, if you'll allow me to read it to you. And I think it's just very interesting about the difference between men and women when it comes to anger. So it says, women who openly express anger at men are, are especially suspect. Even when society is sympathetic to our goals of equality, we all know that those angry women turn everybody off. Unlike our male heroes who fight and even die for those uh, for what they believe in, women may be condemned for waging a bloodless and humane revolution for their own rights. Let's think about what's happening in Iran right now. 
The direct expression of anger, especially at men, makes us unladylike, unfeminine, unmaternal, sexually unattractive, or more recently, strident. Even our language condemns such women as shrews, witches, bitches, hags, nags, man-haters, and castrators. They are unloving and unlovable. They are devoid of femininity. Certainly, you do not wish to become one of them. It is an interesting side light that our language, created and codified by men, does not have one unflattering term to describe men who vent their anger at women. Even such epithets as epithets as bastard and son of a bitch do not condemn the man but place the blame on the woman his mother i just thought that was really interesting and the difference between men and women with anger and how crushing down our anger and bear, burying our anger has a massive effect on our lives but i just thought that book was really really interesting for any women out there who find that their emotions Perhaps their emotions may be misguided or, you know, and the wrong, and I use this term loosely, the wrong emotion comes up for certain situations. Very mild example for me was I was parked outside of the back of our family uh, business and somebody reversed their car alongside, parallel to my car, um, and scraped the entire side of the car and i got out and the woman who was reversing uh, said to me that you uh, you can't prove it was me and drove off and i instead of getting angry which would have been an appropriate response i got really really upset like and i started crying and i couldn't use my words and she drove off and because what i felt was angry and now i'm not condoning that we go out and we start screaming at everybody but anger is very it's a very useful emotion to let us know what's happening inside us and what needs to change. A violation of our rights that we are, there's been, something has been done to us that we need to change something. And this book, highly recommend. Hi. Now, next. Now this is gonna seem like a very obvious, very trendy, very, you know, like that girl kind of book, but it's Manifest by Roxy Nafusi, The Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life. Now bear with me a second. I wouldn't say that this book has changed my life. However, this book has helped to solidify my journey, verify my journey for me, and help me to understand that what I'm doing is, is on the right path. What I really like about this book is the difference between this and the other manifestation books. So I am a big believer in the law of attraction. I absolutely believe that the energy that you send out into the world, you will receive back. I, I've i seen this in very minute ways in terms of you know going out and greeting people now and the way that I carry myself now. And I know there's a whole thing about fat phobia and that's not what I'm saying here. I'm not denying that there is fat phobia and fat hate out there because I've been a, God damn it, I've been a, a victim of it for a long time. I'm not denying that. However, there is a, I can see in the energy that I produce out now, as a much more confident, much more self-aware person is met very differently to the woman. I believe if I was a woman, or kind of a girl, prior, if I acted the same way that I acted prior to losing weight, but was this weight now, I would be met in a similar way. Not Maybe not to the same extent because I was obese and therefore fat, fat phobia, but I do believe that the essence of who I am and the comfort that I have in me and the self-confidence and the light that I shine. And remember, light is energy. And I feel, and I always tap here because that's, if you've seen my therapy video, I'll link it up here. I talk about meeting the light inside of me and sharing that light out. I am reciprocated with that from people. Uh, it's a very, very different way of being for me. And that's, I'm taking the accountability of that because that is something that I have changed. Yes, I am 13 stone lighter. Yes, there is fat phobia, I'm not denying that. But that's just giving you an example of how I believe that the law of attraction in terms of the 
exchange of energies has a big impact on the world. I'm also a very big believer in mood boards, in manifestation. I'm a huge, huge believer in manifestation and knowing what you want and being clear in your vision and attracting it. And what this book, and if you would like me to go into a much more detailed video about manifestation and the law of attraction and how I've used that through my journey, then please let me know down in the comments. And I have attracted some very significant things in my life. In fact, every single significant thing in my life I have attracted. However, what this book does that the others like The Secret, and The Secret is probably like I did have to kind of think which one, this one or The Secret, and they kind of kind of come, I would read both to be honest with you if you've never read them. The Secret is very, it, it, it takes a little bit of the accountability and the proactiveness about manifestation out of it and instead it kind of puts it out to the universe whereas this is about taking down responsibility for it and finding a way to make things work and aligning yourself with the person that you want to be and how that that is basically manifesting. I hope I'm making sense and basically in this you have to be proactive in your decisions, in your alignment. You have to be very clear in your vision, that's step number one. You have to remove fear and doubt, and this is a big thing, and there's a lot of tools in this book that I've taken and used now in my life, not necessarily even in terms of manifestation, but in terms of general life, and removing fear and doubt is, is really big. Um, I, got, I love the kind of, I'm not even sure if it's in this, but in a lot of things they talk about, you know, when you have an idea for something and then of course your negative narrator starts telling you, you know, your life limiting beliefs, like you're not intelligent enough to do that, you can't do that, you know, and what this does in it is it helps you to realize, and others have said this as well, that you, the idea would not have presented itself to you had you not been ready to do it. So I think that's really important. And I think that's something I live by, that the idea that the idea came from you, it came from belief, it came from a trigger of something, of noticing a need, and that if you if you were not ready to do that, uh, that you would not have, it would not have presented it to you. Now you can't think of an idea or think of something, you know, I, Mel Robbins is fantastic. Um, I'm sure you all know Mel Robbins, but there's, you know, she always says the manifestation is not about, you know, it's not about putting a beach house on the mood board. It's about manifestation. It's aligning yourself with everything that you need to do and getting yourself prepared to do all the things that you need to do in order to get that beach house. And for me, it was losing 13 stone and other things. So I can go into that in another point, but I really like what Roxy does here about the proactive thing and the taking responsibility and taking the action for yourself and putting that onus on, on you, on us, in order to do that and not just thinking that if you think something it's going to appear. That's what I really like about this. That's what's different to a lot of other books that I've read and I wholeheartedly agree. Right, last book. This author, I would say, is a gift a gift from the universe. He is one of my, on my goal board, on my manifestation board, is to be interviewed by this man on his podcast. Actually, my memoir is to have done something worthy enough to be interviewed by him, well, that might be my negative narrator, um, or to be as prolific enough to be interviewed by him and to have a conversation with this man because he is, he is a gift. I actually am getting emotional thinking about this book. This book is Solve for Happy. I lost my pen. This book is Solve for Happy by Mo Goddard. And he wrote this book 17 days after his son and best friend died uh, during a routine operation. Something that should have been very, very simple. It was his appendix, I think. Um, his appendix or tonsils. I can't remember it was his appendix, something that is done all the time. And he wrote this book to help people to understand happiness. And he uses a formula in it to help you to understand happiness. 
He was a former engineer and chief business officer for Google X program. He's an incredibly intelligent man, but he is one of the most beautiful souls on earth. And his teachings in this book, actually what I'm gonna say about this book, I have never been more uncomfortable in my entire life than when I was reading this. Uncomfortable, genuinely not okay reading this. And because I knew it was triggering and challenging a lot of things that was going on inside of me. A lot of things. And I read this post uh, pregnancy, when I had postnatal depression, when I was coming out of postnatal depression, I read this book. I listened to it and I also, that's just something I might put on the side, I both listen um, via Audible because I, I can't remember what the term is, but my brain takes in information best when I'm listening as opposed to reading. And then I always buy the book as well if it's something that's significant to me so I can make notes and annotations and I can always come back to that specific point. So that's just a little, little aside. But read this book, read this book. Basically, Mo realized, in spite of his wealth and professional success, that he was deeply unhappy and he analyzed the problem and developed a formula to deliver lasting happiness. He soon realized that the formula could work for everyone without exception. So this book is, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful book. And there is, if you, any of you are like me and have that negative narrator, there is a whole chapter, page 50, whole part in here about the voice is not you. And I still have to ensure that I am knowing that. I have to ensure that I am taking the time to really understand that because that voice, I learned to block it, I've learned to quieten it, but sometimes when I'm having a bad day, it'll rear its ugly head. And this is a book that I will go back to again and again and again and again because the nuggets of wisdom in this this is a wise man. This is like Gabor Mate wise. Uh, from a very different perspective than you would think than somebody like Gabor Mate who is phenomenal in his own, in a different way. Uh, in a very similar way actually, but backgrounds are different. But this, I highly recommend. Highly, highly, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. They are the four books that one book that changed my life and the three books who helped to shape me into the person that I am today. There are other books that I love and that I've learned a lot from and if you would like me to continue this or to make this a bit of a series, please let me know in the comments down below because I really actually really enjoyed filming this and it was really good for me to revisit some of them again. I like to go back into books and revisit them. Also, um, there is a book, another book that I will talk about but in in the, f in the future, um, if I do another one of these, if you guys want to see it, but one of the things from that book is that we don't always have to finish a book. I think that's something that was instilled in all of us, instilled in me anyway, as a child, or in many of us, that you have to finish a book once you start it. And this author says that, you know, if you get something that's key out of it, you don't have to continue with the book or you know it might have only been a chapter that's presented something to you that is helps you and i think it's also really important as well to go back and visit books because as we are ever evolving and ever changing and ever growing as a species as a person you never know where you'll be at that time you'll never know you know what you need to hear or what will sit differently with you. So I think when it comes to this kind of book, this kind of personal development, self-care kind of, you know, that kind of book, it can be really interesting to go back and revisit things again. So and that's just a couple of pieces of advice um, that I will give. But I hope you guys have enjoyed uh, this book, this video, <laughs> book, this video. Um, hopefully one day I'll be standing here holding up my book and saying, this is my one. And it changed my life because I had to write it. If you guys have reached the end of this video, is there a book emoji? There has to be a book emoji. I'm sure there's a book emoji. Please leave me a book emoji down below and please let me know your favourite books down in the comments and books that helped you and if there's anything that helped change your life or shape you as a person. I would really, really like to hear and I would love to get a conversation going in the comments about your favourite books and why they helped shape you and 
I would love to read them as well. So guys, I will love you and leave you and I will talk to you all very soon. Bye.